You know, we require a lot of our kitchen. It's where we prep, create, and ultimately gather. A new book celebrates this all important space for what it can do and what it can be. Joy of Kitchen is part recipe, part coffee table book that combines the expertise of two very talented sisters. Kara Fox is an interior designer known for her timeless and beautiful style. And her sister Tana is a certified nutritionist who teaches private cooking classes in the community. Together today, they make up our kitchen dream team. Welcome, <laughs> ladies. Hey, thank um, you. Dresses, coordinating, sisters, <laughs> together. Know. We had to. She How dresses me. I love it. This? I know. I told these girls, it's taking every ounce of confidence I have to sit next to these two oh, beautiful gosh. brunettes. You guys are Stop. stunning. Mm -hmm. How fun was it to come together on this project and ultimately see this book be out in the open? It was really rewarding. And I would say a huge sense of gratitude um, to kind of see our family legacy, you know, the Fox Group, 16 years worth of kitchens that we've designed and um, brought to life all in this book. 16 years. 16 years. No, it's yeah. not amazing. Wow. So it's kind of a culmination of, of 16 years worth of our work. And then to put that together with my sister and her life's work and just all things coming together in the kitchen, it was just very rewarding. We see, yeah. we see Kara's kitchen spaces online. You bring the food, the food punch, the food power, the food fun. I, I'm assuming your own kitchen growing up had to be that same force, that oh, place of refuge and together. Absolutely. Togetherness. I have, we have very vivid memories as children centered around the kitchen or my grandpa's garden or just being as a, at, a, at a gathering place for everyone to come to be fed and to be entertained and to laugh and it is it's definitely the heart of a home yes. and a heart of our homes yes. too. In the book you describe it as a place of healing and I, I gave pause to that word because really you think of all that happens in a kitchen those late night you know, serial conversations where the yep. kids are actually yeah. opening up, right? Or you mentioned your grandparents bringing their legacy and their recipes to your table. It's such an amazing, almost sacred space, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, absolutely. You've got some tips to help all of us, no matter the size of our kitchen or the shape of our kitchen, create what we just described, that refuge. And you say it begins with a vision. Yeah, so we, you know, first thing in creating, in creating a kitchen, you know, we always get someone's vision of, their ideal self in that space. Like, wh who do you want to be? Who do you dream of being? What do you- What do you what love do you, to do? What do you love to do? What do you want to eat, you mm -hmm. know? This is the place to really bring all those passions together and really create your best self, whether it's food, the decor, be inspired by everything that's in your kitchen. And it really allows you to live your best yeah. life. And when you start life. with that as the foundation, it's easy to build upon. You know, oh, I'll put this here. I need my fridge here. I need my sink here. I maybe need two sinks here. Mm -hmm. It's easy to envision it once you yeah. kind of identify with what you really want in it. And to take pride in what you love and what you enjoy use. seeing and what you use. You want every woman to include items as part of the space, as part of the decor even, that are functional, that again, speak to how they're going to use that yes, space. absolutely. Yeah. We, we always say kitchen space is precious. Oh, don't have valuable real estate yes, in there. On a shelf that you don't use or that you don't love. Okay, so we asked both of you before you left your houses this morning to snap a picture of a functional mm -hmm. item yep. out in your kitchen <laughs> that speaks to you. Kara, kick us off, what, what grabs your eye? Mine were my copper pots that are collected over probably the last decade, yeah. but I use every day. Okay, what about you, Tana? I had a tie between two. I have my glass jars and my beautiful wood cutting board. They're just things that, again, that are beautiful, that I use all the time, that collected. I leave out and have collected, and I use them for displaying style and food. So beautiful, and ones. again, they're useful. They're mm -hmm. useful yeah. and they're pretty. You also recommend pulling in textures and art, which for a space like the kitchen, this might be a design stretch for some people to think about. Yes, art is probably our favorite thing to put sure. in a kitchen. And I always, people are always like, what kind of art? What do I, what, what do, I do? Yeah. Um, places that inspire you, places you've traveled to, still lifes. In Tana's kitchen, we put still life citrus um, because she's inspired and uses citrus in her yeah. cooking all the time. So it was just natural that we put something that inspires you. You know, and it goes along with colors. If you're inspired by, you know, rainbows, by even if it's all white, put those colors in your kitchen. I was going to say you took the word out of my mouth, color. Nothing, mm -hmm. I think, crafts a feeling or a vibe in a space more than color. Second to that would be art. So to look at those sure. pieces as part of our kitchen space is great advice. Throw out what we don't use. We talked about the real estate in the kitchen being <laughs> yes. valuable, precious. Yeah. Get rid of what's not working for you. And then you encourage people to style with real food. Absolutely. Plants, fruits, and vegetables are the best way to improve your health, 
but it's the best way to improve the style in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. They're natural, they're fresh, they're, they're inviting. I mean, if you see a bowl of fruit in the middle of the kitchen or a cup of nuts and chocolates, it just says, come and sit down, talk to me, eat me, be nourished, be fed. So I think it's one of, by far one of the best things to add to a kitchen. And you can make them seasonal, you can change them if you get, you know, change the, yeah. the whatever happens to be. Yeah, in, in the moment. In the moment, yeah. yeah. You say ultimately, and, and, and this is driven home in, in beautiful fashion in this, in this gorgeous book, but ultimately the kitchen we want to be a so is, is a source of connection, right? A place, we talked about that gathering. Yeah. How can we achieve that vibe in any space, any size? Yeah, I think, I think the ultimate entertainer is one that makes you feel at comfort. You know, you walk into their kitchen, you walk into her space, and she makes you feel, you know, mm -hmm. warm and happy at and, home. In, and yeah. home. And the way um, people feel in your kitchen is an extension of who you are. We love to feast, so it's so fun to gather and eat and connect and to see the joy also in serving someone. Like, there is nothing greater than, here, eat this and, and I enjoy love, it. And I always says, we feast, but we feast socially. Mm -hmm. I love too. that. Yeah. Yeah, every time my family leaves from a Sunday dinner, like my extended yeah. family, my husband's always, he's, he's quick to joke. You get really teary. Like, <laughs> I feel tender yeah. when people leave that True. space because of what's happened mm -hmm. and the connection that has formed. So I love that you're celebrating that. In yeah. this beautiful book, The Joy of mm. Kitchens, where can we get a copy? So we have copies at the Fox Shop, um, which is just in Holiday, Utah. And we actually have a book signing next Friday that we'll be doing from 2 to 7. PM. Um, we can all. You can also purchase it on our website, uh, thefoxshop.co. Well, we're cheering you on. It's a beautiful oh, publication. So congratulations.